February should be a key month for state education officials as they retool Indiana's most basic expectations for students. We now turn to state impact education reporter Kyle Stokes. Kyle, what's the timeline for this rewrite of the state's academic well, standards? Well, we hear a lot about April, Joe. The State Board of Education hopes to have a draft ready for consideration by April and final academic standards by July. And we should just pause here and say, this is a big deal. It can impact what happens in every classroom around the state on a daily basis, and it's already been a very political process as lawmakers have balked at Indiana's plans to use nationally crafted standards known as the Common Core. State board members have asked teams of educators and subject matter experts to review the standards starting around Valentine's Day. As, the controversi as controversial as the Common Core aligned standards have been, state board members may still select standards that look a lot like them at the end of this review process, but the state's previous academic standards standards are also up for consideration. Governor Mike Pence this week kept mum on how he'd like to scale back the state's tax on business equipment, saying he'd still like to negotiate with state lawmakers, but he thinks the time is right to slash the tax. But the tax they're proposing to cut is a kind of property tax, and some school districts have already seen big dings to their property tax revenues. School districts use that money to essentially pay for their mortgage, for their credit card, or for their buses, or for building repairs. And they're losing that money because of a state-mandated cap on the amount of property taxes local governments can collect. And these property tax caps have cost schools a total of $245 million in property tax revenues last year. And this map shows where most of that money was lost. The darker the district, the deeper the hit to a school district's budget. And you can see most districts, because they're kind of in a lighter color here, didn't lose that much. More than two-thirds of districts in the state lost less than 5% of their property tax revenues. But in these darker districts, the losses were bigger. A handful of districts lost more than half of their property tax revenues, like the Muncie Community Schools, you see here more than 70% lost. And you've heard about cuts in Muncie to the school's busing budget. And geography is a big story in the property tax issue. Most of the losses to the caps have occurred in incorporated areas. That's because property owners have one more layer of government to pay their taxes to their city or their town. And we know that property taxes are a topic that makes people's heads spin. So here's a video that we put together explaining how property taxes factor into school budget and explains the impact of those caps using only Dixie cups and a coffee pot. And Joe, you can find that right now along with more on the proposed business equipment tax cut on our blog. And Joe, I promise you that it's a heady subject, but that video is actually kind of fun. I had a lot of fun putting it together. It looks great. Can't wait to see it. Thanks, Absolutely. Kyle.